Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome to Seduce Me, a lesson in romance. James's epilogue ending. Uh, this is an extra episode that was made for Seduce Me. It's not available on Steam, you can only get it on Itch.io. But since it's an epilogue and we've just finished James's route, I thought it would be appropriate for us to come here and start this. Also, I just noticed that in the corner it says hashtag Bastro, and I... <laughs> ah, that is amazing. I love that. Bastro. <laughs> So perfect. Anyway, let's see what James has left in store for us for the last time. Start. What's your name? Angel. Amgel. Amgel. There we go. Had my fingers in the wrong spot. Angel. Imagine, if you will, you live in a gorgeous mansion with the man of your dreams. You can do anything you have ever wanted, and there was nothing in the world that could hold you back. Well, that was my life. I was the granddaughter of a CEO, and had somehow earned his estate upon his death. The man of my dreams just happened to be waiting for me in the lobby of the mansion as I moved in. Mind you, he was mortally wounded, and he turned out to be a demon, but that was beside the point. The man of my dreams, James, was smart, kind, caring, and very capable of taking care of not only me, but his four younger brothers. The five of them lived with me for a short while, making the house as lively as ever. However, I only needed James at my side, and soon enough the younger four brothers left us to our own devices, wanting to start lives of their own. Living with James was like a dream come true. He always cooked breakfast and helped me keep the house clean, and during his free time he tended the garden. There were often times when he and I would eat in the gazebo outside, enjoying the sun and fresh air. Work-wise, James had taken the position of CEO at my grandfather's toy company and helped expand it to new heights. He did his very best to make it the best company it could be and wound up raising more money for charity than any other company on the planet. Needless to say, I was very proud of him and was happy to know that my grandfather's company was in good hands. I was even more happy to call him mine. James and I had lived a dreamlike romance for a year and a half. The thought of marriage often crossed my mind, but I left it to the hands of fate. If James was going to propose to me, then he would do it when he was ready. Okay, so this takes place before the end of his route. Nevertheless, the conversations we would have were interesting, to say the least. You're looking a little paler than usual there, James. <laughs> One day, I found him lounging in the library, lost in a familiar book. With a smirk, I crept inside and peered over his shoulder at the chapter he was reading. <laughs> you really like that book, don't you, James? Jumping in his seat, James snapped out of his train of thought and stared up at me in surprise, making me laugh and grip the chair to keep from falling onto my knees from the hilarity. L love I I uh <laughs> Good afternoon to you too, James. Enjoying that story? I smiled playfully at James before taking the book out of his hands and looking at the cover. I was right. Love and Romance, A Study of Intimacy. You really do love that book. <clears throat> James cleared his throat as he shook his head and relaxed in his chair, trying to calm down from his sudden surprised outburst. You keep coming back to this book, no matter how many others you read. Why? It's an interesting commentary on romance. A writer falling in love with her manager and dealing with her own internal feelings is an interesting topic to read about. Truly. I handed the book back to James before walking around and sitting on the empty seat across from his. James nodded and placed the book down on the table between us while he crossed his legs. Remember, demons don't fully understand love. We may experience it, but we don't know it well enough to label it as such. But you understand it, right? Of course. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't continue to read about it. I guess you're right, but what does reading that book over and over do for your research on it? James chuckled and leaned back in his chair. That book in particular shows the balance between love and lust, which, by contrast, is an emotion demons understand completely. Ah, by contrast, I see. Completely? I'm sure there are some things even you don't understand if demons don't understand love. Provoked by my statement, James raised his eyebrow with almost an amused grin. Is that a challenge? For a moment, I remember James's powerful personality. This was a challenge of his intelligence, and such a dare would not remain undominated for long under his keen eye. 
As I mulled over the idea in the following seconds of silence, I could only find myself entertained by the idea of him trying to prove himself to me. To that, I smirked and lifted my chin a bit in a small taunting display. <laughs> and if it was? The moment James smirked at me and licked his lips ever so slightly made me question everything in the form of loud screaming in my head. What did I throw myself into? Still, my face remained unfazed, and I continued to stand my ground as James replied. Then tell me, what could I possibly not know? I stared at James for the longest time before settling into my seat, crossing my legs. If this was going to be a lesson in romance, then this was going to be one where I was the teacher. Alright then. Do you know what's the sexiest thing a person can do for another? That's a bit specific. I promise, there's only one answer. That was a lie. There was obviously more than one answer, but I hoped that he would draw the answer from our relationship rather than just form a generic answer. Either way, I would get him. Also, just a second, the background music's a little loud. James sat back and closed his eyes, thinking to himself and assembling his answer. As he opened his eyes, he smiled. Make them feel cared for and cherished beyond anything else in the world. His answer surprised me. I imagined him trying to weasel out of the answer with a gesture or a specific action. As his words hit me, my cheeks burned a soft pink in agreement. It was rather sexy to think about. Okay. The feeling of his hands along my body would make me feel like a goddess worthy enough to be ravished. The kisses on my skin would paint me in a glow of love and compassion. The way he held me always sent me to cloud nine. He had won this round. I nodded, perceiving my lips as his smirk grew a bit. He interlaced his fingers and placed them on his knee, awaiting my next question. This had become a game of trivia, almost. Would he know all of the answers? I pushed forward, now determined to prove that I was right. Okay, but what about sexy clothes? What about them? What color clothes should a person wear to attract someone? Another trick question. This was all a matter of opinion. It didn't take long for James to reply. It depends on the person they wish to attract. As James's eyes traveled up and down my form, I suddenly felt naked. I personally would love to see you in black. Perhaps gold or red. Damn it. He won again, but at least I knew what to wear if I ever wanted to seduce him into bed. I shook my thoughts out and knuckled down on my determination. I would not be beaten. I uncrossed my legs and leaned over my knees, face as stone cold as a statue. James raised an amused eyebrow once again as I threw a volley of questions at him, throwing, hoping to throw him off. Giving or receiving? Giving. Nightgowns or teddies? Nothing at all. Ha ha. Kitchen or shower? Both. <laughs> that is the correct answer. I was going crazy at the ideas forming in my head. This game of question and answer became one that heightened my libido in the most shameless of ways. Still, I would not give in. The questions became about our relationship more than just general romance and lust. The more he answered, the more I learned about him. I would use his responses to my advantage later, but for now, the harvest for answers continued. Sensual or rough? Depends on how we feel. Fast or slow? Start slow, then get faster. Handcuffs or blindfolds? Both. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> well, haven't we learned something interesting about you? James instantly covered his mouth with his hand, the slip escaping his lips and making his true feelings known alongside the embarrassed blush crossing his cheeks. As his answer rung in my ears, my entire face became beet red. What was that, my good sir? James was into both handcuffs and blindfolds? What about other kinky things? Whips? Rods? James shook his head, so he wasn't into any sort of violent play. Being called master? Silence. It made sense, him liking the play on his dominance. BDSM? James closed his eyes and sighed into his palm before it fell to his lap and he lowered his head. As he spoke, I could tell he was being frank with me, dissolving his shame as he was speaking to the one he loved. It's not something demons do, but I enjoy learning about it and imagining it. 
Where did you learn about it? <laughs> he shook, shook his head. A novel I read a long time ago. It was a study on fictional romance and the publishing of erotica in the last ten years. It wound up in the piles of books I read when we first came to the human world. That explained it. However, I almost didn't expect it from James. Eric! <laughs> I mean, maybe, but not James. Looking at him, I could tell James was trying to come to terms with releasing this information to me. While he was talking to the one he loved, he knew that the topic was a pretty big one to drop in the game we were previously playing. I didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable about it, so I spoke up again. Are you... interested in trying it? Double click. For a moment, James didn't answer. When he did, I could tell that he was being open about it now that I knew of his true feelings for it. I would be lying if I said no. James looked back up at me, his expression neutral in an attempt to remain calm. I leaned back in my seat and closed my eyes. This game definitely taught me a lot of new things about James. Who would have known? Would I pursue this new information and try it with him? That was up to me to decide later on. For now, though, our game had ended and it was unclear who had won between us. I had gotten my answers, but the last question threw both of us off. How would we determine the winner? Did I double click? Yeah, I did double click. I finally decided to stand up and walk over to James, letting him watch me as I sat on his lap, wrapping my arms around his neck and leaning my forehead against his. Hmm. Maybe you do know everything. James finally relaxed and nuzzled my nose with his before kissing me softly. Well, not everything. This music, though. Huh? I still have a lot to learn about you. Uh-oh. Me? Oh. Well, let's take a good look at this one, shall we? Huh, I have never seen you without your glasses until now, I just realized. You're even cuter. James stared deep into my eyes, leaning back and removing his glasses. As his whiskey eyes began to glow a soft golden color, I gasped as he smiled playfully at me. It's only fair that I ask you the same questions that you asked me. Don't you think? Please don't make me actually choose. That's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I stared wide-eyed at James. Was he seriously going to ask me the same questions I asked him? James chuckled lowly. What? Are you afraid now? Terrified. N no <laughs> Good. Because I don't intend to be gentle. Fuck. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm like, please don't make me answer anything. <laughs> oh. Whew. What a relief. Okay. Good. It ended at a good time. Thank you, James. You ended up still being a perfect gentleman right to the end. <laughs> Love you, Bastro. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining me for a very interesting conversation we had with James. Ahem. Right, well now that we're done with that, it's time to move on to our next game, which is the sequel to Hotful Boyfriends, which is uh, Holiday Star. So I'm going to be starting that up next. I hope I'll see you over there for that, guys. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I will see you later.